American Craftsman Podcast is sponsored by Hayfla. Hayfla offers a wide range of products and solutions for the woodworking and furniture making industries. From hinges and drawer slides to connectors and dowels, sandpaper, shop carts, wood glue, and everything in between. Exclusive product lines such as Lux LED lighting and Slido door hardware ensure that every project you create is built to last. Learn more at Hayfla.com. Wow, I Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. It's only been, I don't know what, three three weeks since uh, I've recorded a podcast. I'm joined by good friend John Peters today. Happy to be here. How's uh, your audio and your headphones? Mine's kind of low. Uh, your sound, I, I sound think it's good? okay. Yeah, I got to turn mine up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's too loud. There I'm we sorry. go. It's hard for me to tell if I'm hearing you on the headphones or just hearing you. Yeah. <laughs> I had all this stuff in that uh, tote back there, and I think all the knobs got got jumbled around. Um, so, yeah, man, I guess uh, a lot of a lot of updates to go over in the past couple of weeks. But we just we just recorded a, a video. Yeah, we just recorded a video on the uh, the Apollo spray system. Mm-hmm. So we have to shoot one more scene once the uh, panel that you just sprayed dries. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Hopefully, yeah, it looks good. Can't forget <laughs> that. But uh, you were saying that you had all this. Uh, you bought it all on your fishing trip. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, not this past weekend, which was Easter. The weekend before, uh, went up to Pulaski, New York. And, um, I guess the episode prior, I was, I was talking about that and I did say that we were going to record an episode up there, but that did not come to fruition. Just no time. Uh, just like, you know, caught up in the moment kind of thing. Then you're up there with Matt and yeah. So Matt Viz, I K A G Viz, uh, Will, Wild Willie's wood shop and, uh, Will's buddy, Matt. So that we had two mats, which was cool. Matt was a really cool guy. You know, it's sometimes like you like have to meet somebody who you've never met. And it's like, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, my buddy. And you're like, um, you know, I mean me at least, I mean, maybe I think I am, but I guess I'm really not, you know, you're hesitant to like meet new people and like worried about if they're going to be cool or not. But he, I mean, he was totally cool, dude. Like oh, that's really, cool. Really cool. Yeah. And you, you didn't catch any? No, no, it was brutal. So Will hooked one the first day. Um, so we got up there on a, on a Thursday and we didn't fish Thursday, you know, cause we we're just getting in, getting unpacked, all that stuff. And uh Friday morning, uh, we got a very late start every morning. I was up, I was up pretty early. Those guys were up crazy late, you know, just partying. No, nah, I wouldn't say partying, but yeah, hanging out, drinking some beers, you know, playing pool. Um, so we didn't get out there until I want to say, I think me and Matt hit the river Matt Viz hit the river Friday morning, like maybe 10 o'clock. You know, I'm like a first light kind of guy where I like to get out there, like ass crack at dawn, like before, before the sun's up I'm in the you. spot, like waiting, you know, because you get that morning bite. Steelhead fishing is like, there's a morning bite and then it kind of, it kind of like slows down until like about noon typically, but you know, it's fishing. So it's always different, but, um, it was so cold. I woke up at, Usually I wake up at four. I was up till probably midnight the night before, which is very late for me having some beers. So I think I slept in till like five or five 30 and I got up and nobody else is awake. So I'm sitting there having coffee. I'm like looking at my phone. I'm like, man, it's like 10 degrees outside. Can you, can you walk to the river from where you stay? Oh yeah. So tell me a little bit about this Airbnb. Is it nice? Yeah. So here I'll pull up the map so you can get the full, um, yeah, it is. It is nice. So the house was built in, um, just move this mic, built in 1952. And it's uh, like, a, um, I don't know what you would call it. It has like a walkout basement. This is, it's a, it's a ranch from the front. So is that the house? Oh, that's not- no. So this okay. is the house here. So is so- roof five pretty busy? No, no. Really? No. Okay, so that's the house right there, and then you just walk right down to that river. Yeah, so here's the house. The Like, the parking lot is down here for the actual place, but we don't have to use it, obviously, because we're in this house. But oh, it won't let me go down the driveway. Um, so, yeah, so here's the house. It's this ranch, you know, with, like, a um, 
it's like built into a hill, you know, so yeah. the basement is really on ground level, but um, how do I switch to like the satellite view? That way you can see, well, yeah. you can see the can river right, right here. If you click right there on the left hand where it says layers. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's the house. Wow. And you walk out of the, I mean, we go out of the garage. But I mean, you could have gone fishing if you wanted to. Yeah. You could have just gone. If oh, it was yeah. nicer out, you probably would have. Exactly. It was just so cold, you know, like 10 degrees A is brutal to fish in. The water was probably about. At, at that point, like mid thirties. Um, and when you're fly fishing and I guess I've never spin fished in, in cold like that, but like the eyelets freeze up. So the water is on the line and it's going through the eyelets and fly line holds a lot of water because mm. of the diameter, you know, the diameter of fly line is like my, um, uh, what do I have a Skagit head on my one rod is like <clears throat> the diameter is like three sixteenths of an inch. It's huge. So yeah, it carries wow. all that water and it's pulling it through the eyes and then they freeze up. So, um, you know, you go out there in 10 degrees, it's going to be tough, tough fishing. Um, that so, river does look pretty though. Wow. That yeah, little Island there. Yeah. So this, this is like right where the steps come down is like right, uh, right here. How far up the river did you walk up? So, uh, Douglas and Salmon Run is like this three three mile section of river or two and a half mile section of river that goes from right here, yeah, all the way to the estuary, which is here. Oh wow! Yeah, look at that. So we're sort of in the upper third, like the very border between the the lower. Is that a big lake up beyond that estuary? This this like, is that a yeah this no that it goes out into this yeah holy cow that's look Lake that. Ontario. Holy cow. So look how big. Wow. That looks awesome. Yeah. So like the, um, you know, the, the fish are steelhead. So they're, they're from the Pacific ocean and they were put inside of Lake Ontario in like, I want to say, I don't know about the steelhead, the salmon, same thing. They're from the Pacific ocean. They're, they're, um, Chinook or King salmon people yep. call them and coho salmon. So they put them in the lake in like the early 1900s. I think steelhead came like a little bit later, but so they treat the lake like it's the ocean and then they go up into the river to spawn and then they go back. I mean, the salmon die, the steelhead, they go back into the lake. So are they going, they're going down river in this case? Uh, well, they go up river to spawn. So like, okay, so they come in here. This is the estuary. Yeah. They come into this little, this little inlet right here, basically. Yeah. And they come up here, they go up river. So that's going up river? That would seem to me like it was down river. No, because it flows into oh, the lake. it flows lake. into the lake. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. Um, and then, you know, the river, I think, is 12 miles long. So you see it goes all the way up here. Will that go all the way to the ocean uninterrupted? Or is there dams? No, there's a dam. So right here, there's a fishery. Uh, okay. uh, sorry, a hatchery. Yeah. So they, um, they end up collecting some of the fish and fertilizing the eggs artificially and releasing them back. Gotcha. And, you know, they like raise them into fry. But then if you keep going up, um, wow, you get this reservoir. There's no fish ladders on it or anything? Mm, I don't know. You can't get like super close to this. The closest I've been is like um, maybe right here. This is as far as you can go. And then there's <laughs> all kinds of signs that say like, you know, whatever, do not enter. Okay. Because it's private property. Yeah. It's, um, I guess it's like drinking water. So they, sure. you know, you're not allowed to get, get near it. Um, but there's actually, I think an upper reservoir too. Yeah. Right here. Wow. I mean, huge. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. Salmon reservoir. So it's, it's what they call a tail water, which I guess means it's below a reservoir. Now, how come you go so early in the season? Well, for steelhead, the steelhead actually start coming in at the same time as the salmon. So the salmon start coming in at the earliest, like um, Labor Day. Okay. And then they run until like, say, November. The steelhead start to come in at the same time because they come in to eat all the eggs gotcha. from the salmon. And then they stay in until, um, you know, they start to uh, spawn, I guess, in like February, March. And then they do what's called drop back. So they drop back to the to the lake. So do you want to catch steelhead over salmon? Uh, yeah. I mean, steelhead are seen as more of like a game fish. Not, well, not that the salmon are game, 
not game fish because they are. But the salmon, like when they come into the river, they kind of stop eating. Oh, okay. You know, because they're just on they're just, this like yeah. life cycle thing where they're like got to go up and spawn and then they die. Yeah. Um, there are some salmon that come in the river that don't die. They just are kind of like following the pack kind of thing. Um, I forget what they call them, but they haven't like reached sexual maturity. They're gotcha. just like sort of just like following the 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 other salmon. Um, but yeah, when they go into the river, they're really just like main focus is like just get to the spot where you were born, spawn, and then they're going to die. Now you can't net them. Are you allowed to net them no, as so a food source? Back in the day... Uh, a big thing was snagging. Yeah. So have you ever seen a snag sure. hook for bunker? So they would throw those and snag the salmon. Um, and in the nineties, I want to say they totally banned it. So now it's like, there's very strict rules. The salmon river has specific um, DEC, which is like the New York state. Um, we have fish and game. It's called, it's their equivalent, the department of environmental conservation or something like that. It has its own regulations, the Salmon River, in terms of weight, the distances between your hook and the weight, um, all these different very specific regulations to deter people from snagging. Okay. But you have to do what's called flossing, basically. It will strike something like out of aggression sometimes. This is what I've been told. But really what's happening is you're flossing them. So your your fly or whatever you have is drifting down river and and you kind of just like drift the line into their mouth. Okay. Basically. Yeah. You're really just like snagging them in the mouth. Sure. It's a little more skilled. Yeah. So salmon kind of has like a bad reputation in terms of like the flossing and everything. So steelhead eat the whole time. Okay. Um, and they're really like sought after game fish. They fight really hard. They jump. Um, they're hard to catch. So can you, ca- can you go fishing for steelhead in the lake then? Yeah. Off you know, different times of the year. Yep. It just seems like you're going to be up there in brutal cold. Every time I think you've gone up there, it's been brutal cold. Yeah. I've gone up there during salmon season. Like I used to always do, I had a group of friends in a past life (laughs) that uh, we would do like a Labor Day trip, which was like total hit or miss. So it would be like either there were salmon in the river or there weren't, you know, it would be the very beginning of the season regardless. Um, so I used to do that. I've been there in like October during the salmon run. Um, but yeah, now I sort of um, have, I've tried to create like this tradition of like this spring. Cause it's kind of like a good time. I feel like, yeah. you know, you're just itching to do something get outside. Sure. You've been cooped up for, you know, since November, December. And it's, it's just so hit or miss with the weather. I mean, because we're here in Jersey which is six hours south mm-hmm. and it's cold and crummy out this week. Yeah. So, yeah. So up there on Friday night into Saturday, it snowed like seven inches. You had to walk through the snow to get to the river. Yeah. So we, there's a, um, so they have a bunch of different lodges, like there's Meadow Lodge here, Mud Creek Lodge. This is all on the other side of the river. And we're, um, we're over here. So they have a parking lot and that's right here that you can, Actually, if you're st- staying in a lodge, they give you like a, a hang tag or whatever, and you can drive and park there so you can access, you know, some other parts of the river. Well, they close this lot because of the snow. Oh, wow. And they like push back the opening time to 9 a.m. Um, so we had planned to drive and park here and fish this lower part of the river because I had never fished it. And last year, um, the lowest we went was like over here. And there's this whole section of river down here. Wow, um, that just looks so nice. Yeah, it's really cool. We went all the way down to... Uh, I'm not sure. We went almost all the way to the estuary. So so that morning we wake up and um, we walk across the river here in, you know, six inches of snow. And we walked all the way down. Wow, that's a good walk. All the way down to here. Yeah, about about two miles. And, and did you um, did you walk back on the river or did you walk back on the road? Uh, there's like a, you know, they have like paths. Like you can see this path that's yep. just oh, sort gotcha. of worn in. Um, I want to say we went all the way to here. Yeah. And and nothing? No. The, uh, we saw some fish. Uh, they were really beat up. Like, I don't know if it was the weather or what, but like they, 
you know, like salmon when they yeah, go salmon up. salmon start to look pretty. Yeah, like they look like zombies. Yeah, and these steelhead that we saw were like, they had like white patches and stuff. Wow. Um, I don't know if it was from the spawning or, or I don't know, the water temperature was low, so they weren't eating a lot. I'm not sure what. I would imagine that the salmon, when they start to look like zombies, I thought that was a pretty good analogy to mm-hmm. uh I can't imagine they taste that good at that point. Yeah. And the other thing is like, you know, there's like a, a big power plant somewhere over here, hmm. like in the river, in the, um, like a nuclear power plant. I think so. Yeah. In Lake Ontario. And like they have, I mean, everybody water has like its recommendations as to how much you're supposed to eat. And like, you're not supposed to eat like a lot. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So where, so Douglas and salmon run where we fish. Um, all of the trout species. So there's brown trout, there's Atlantic salmon. That's not trout, but steelhead, brown trout. Um, there's, I don't really think there's any brook trout, uh, but you can't keep any of the trout species. You have to put them all back. And the Atlantic salmon, which are native, which they got fished basically to extinction. And now they're like slowly bringing them back. Those you have to put back too. Is that because of you just want to keep the fish in the source? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Wow. Huh. Yeah, so like all the people I I ever fished with who caught salmon, like they would get them smoked. Nobody's really eating it. Hmm. You know, like a salmon filet or, or steak. Good eating fish is um, striped bass yeah. around here. That's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, that'll, we eat that raw. Yeah, it's I've so never good. had it raw, but it's good grilled. You know, it's oh, got the man. body where it can act, you can actually grill it. And that season is coming up like another week or two around here. Yeah, so I, I uh, know a guy who uh, works on one of the boats out of Leonardo Marina. And uh, they're waiting on the boat to come back from getting repaired. But he said the fish are here. They're here already. Yeah, wow. you know, it's, it's not quite full blown yet. Um, You're going to be in the river or they're here in the off, off the off the shore? Uh, well, you know, so they're coming from like up North, like Montauk and everything. And I guess they go all the way up to Canada Okay. and now they're migrating back down. So they'll come out of the Hudson river. They'll come, you know, they come into the bay and eat and then, you know, they're making their way to like the Chesapeake. It's like a three inch slip now where you can actually keep them. I think it's yeah between 28 and 31 inches. And then there's like a slot fish too. Like one that's like, it's gotta be over this, but under Something like that. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of fish out there. Yeah. I went out two or three times last year, and we got into them. And uh, when they were there, it was just like every cast. Let's see the bonus program. One fish per permit at twenty four to less than twenty eight. Permit. Oh, uh, this is old information. That's yeah. They had the bonus program. Okay. Here we go. NJ straight bass regulation. One fish at 28 to less than 38. 30. Okay. Yeah. New slot size. Uh, I don't know. It's so hard to understand sometimes. I remember I haven't fished for stripers in, in a couple of years, but when I was fishing, it was 28, but there was no upper limit. Yeah. It was just anything over 28. Just anything over 28. Yeah. Yeah. And then they had that bonus thing where during a certain time you could keep a fish that was, yeah, 24 to 28 or something, like a schoolie. I tell you what's fun is uh, when you get into the, um, the snap, uh, not the snappers, but they're uh, bluefish, but they're, oh, yeah. what do they call them? When cocktail they're, like, blues. Cocktail blues. Yep. And they taste great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I haven't eaten one here, but I've had it like down in South Carolina. It was good. Oh, I, I mean, I really like those and they're so simple to cook. You just fill the cavity with some uh some lemons and garlic garlic mm-hmm. salt some other spices put it on the grill hot flip it just don't flip it try to flip it too soon you got to kind of crisp up the skin yeah otherwise it'll stick yeah otherwise yeah. it sticks and uh that is so good and they're just such a fun fight yeah bluefish you know i've had some times where we've actually taken the hooks off oh yeah and just fish with no hooks because the bite is so crazy. You know, you could ca- every cast, you could catch a 30 inch bluefish and like your arms would be dead because yeah. they're just, I mean, call them alligators. They're like vicious. 
I'll I'll uh, pinch the barb when yeah. they're really running, just so that it doesn't damage their mouth and it's easier to get them off the hook. Yeah, and like if you have like a lot of people fish with poppers for bluefish because yep. the top water is really fun, and most of the time they have treble hooks. But if you can take them off and put just a big single single hook, yeah. Um, the problem is when you catch them, you can't lip them like a striped bass because they have teeth. Yeah, and you don't like to gill them because it's just it's not good for the fish. And trying to get treble hooks out of that thing's mouth is dangerous. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. We uh, we got to watching this guy. I think I've told you about him before when we were up there just hanging out. Uh, outdoor Chef Life. It's this guy, Taku. He's out in, um, in the Bay Area, San Francisco. And he does a lot of fishing and foraging. And then he'll like cook up. He was like a sushi, sushi chef. That's a hard combination. Yeah, it is. Sushi chef. He was a sushi chef, so he, you know, he'll cook cook up the fish and stuff. So we were watching him in this uh, island in in the South Pacific. He went to uh, fish for giant trevally GT, and they're these big, massive, like one of the world's best game fish. And he he was fishing for them, and he caught something else, and he got it up, and it was like thrashing around. He's up on these jagged rocks where like the waves are crashing and stuff. And it actually like the lore got his leg Ooh. and ripped through his leg, like Ooh. it hooked him and then it ripped the hook out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. He had to like go to the hospital because Ugh. the water can have bacteria. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. My son, Jack, when he came home from Hawaii uh, this winter, like three days later, he, he could barely walk. I remember that. I remember you telling us about that. Stepped on something. He cut his foot surfing, and then he got some kind of infection. I think he was in the hospital for two and a half days. I never thought about that. Like the warm water could harbor bacteria. Yeah, because I always think of the oceans like so rejuvenating, kind of cleans you out. Yeah. You know, you have a. I remember being a kid going in the ocean with cuts, and you, they'd heal really fast. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. You know, I was sort of surprised, but. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a little stressful. I've it was it was all around Christmas. I think it was like I think he got out of the hospital on Christmas Eve. Yeah, because yeah. I think you came yeah. and did a podcast like a week or two later, and we were talking about yeah, it. yeah, and it was uh, and then everybody got sick at my house around Christmas. Michael had to go; he didn't have to stay in the hospital, but we ended up taking him to the emergency room because I think he had a hundred and three. Yeah, yeah, it was like holy cow, everybody got sick i i seem to avoid it um but anyway uh yeah that's kind of an, an odd thing but you you can really you can really get injured trying to take a hook out of a, a fish's mouth yeah yeah like bass you know they're pretty docile they like are. when you get them in the and they really don't fight like and they have that gigantic mouth too i mean yeah. you could just sort of yeah i mean you grab it with two hands yeah, if you wanted to it's easy um but yeah blue fish is man they're strong and they are those teeth are wicked and they're all over the, like the world bluefish. Um, I watch a guy, Australian guy, same sort of thing. He does like a lot of camping where he'll like take his, you know, like a little boat or a kayak out to like an Island in Australia and he'll camp out and spear fish and all this stuff. Um, same, you know, these are YouTube guys. They, that's what they do. That's how they make their living. These guys are, have guts to go out fishing the way they do. And these little kayaks are out in the middle of the oh, ocean. Yeah. They've got a, you know, sometimes they're catching sharks. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. This guy goes out and gets like big tuna and, uh, he's pulling the boat around mackerel, and, like yeah. big Spanish mackerel. It's neat. Yeah. But he, he's caught bluefish and they, what do they call them? It has a funny name. Um, let's see. What do they call bluefish in Australia? It's like a, like a man's name or something. Oh, Taylor, hmm. T A I L O R, Taylor, hmm. in Australia and New Zealand, elf and shad in South South Africa. They call bluefish sh shad in South Africa. Yeah, elf and shad huh. in South Africa, and they're uh, uh, pelagic, so they're like in that middle of the water column. I guess that's what that refers to. Hmm. I wonder what the biggest bluefish ever caught. Wow, sometimes weighing as much as 40 pounds. That's crazy. Are you going to do any ocean fishing this year? Uh, I'd like to. 
it's a time thing, right? Yeah. You know what you need to get is um, one of these fat tire electric bikes. Mm -hmm. Kind of gear up your whole bike. And that way you can ride up and down the beach. Yeah. And you can see, you know, because it's just looking for the birds. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of surf fishing. Just something. When they're there, though, that's the, yeah. so much fun. But they could be, they could be you know, a mile up the beach and never come to you. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, that you see guys just driving around their cars looking for birds. Yeah, yeah. So the idea, I was talking to Peter, uh, my buddy who's a, a really into fishing, and we were talking about the idea of like um, getting a bike and like really hooking it up for fishing. Like mm -hmm. not a bike like mine, because my bike is just really geared for, for mountain biking yeah. and being pretty aggressive with... This is more like a, like a cruiser bike yeah. where you could put saddlebags on it mm -hmm. and you could have a, and also my bike, the tires are too thin. You'd need a really fat tire to go on the beach. Yeah, like those. Like a good four and a half inch tire. Yep. That you can run the pressure pretty low. What about those uh, like electric dirt bikes kind of thing? The, those things are, are they called, what are they called? Uh, I don't know. There's a like couple that? different ones that I've seen, different brands and stuff. I don't know. Like that to me seems like you're crossing a line between a motorized vehicle and a bicycle, even though yeah. the other ones are definitely motorcycles too. They just don't go as fast. Right. It's like the pedals are just like sort of a. Yeah. I mean, so my bicycle doesn't have a throttle. You have to pedal it. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm talking about to set up as like a fishing thing more than likely would have some kind of a throttle, whether that's a twist or a yeah. thumb, I don't know. Because if you're wearing like waders or something, it's going to be hard to pedal yeah. a bike. You know? Yeah. Well, they they set them up a lot now. You'll see hunters all set up with these electric bikes because they can get further out into the woods. Like another guy I watch, I'm not a big fan of his videos. They're kind of all, I feel like, you know, he <laughs> like found this, he's like a really big fishing account. He found like this formula and every single video is just like, this, 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 and just like change the location and the name. You know what I mean? It's like, it's too repetitive. I could see what's about to happen, but he has a bike like that and he'll, uh, he's in the Midwest somewhere and he'll park his truck and take this electric bike like miles out to this, whatever. Um, what's he always fishing? What the hell do they call him? Uh, Ten car. spillway. Oh, like a, spillway. Yeah, oh, yeah. To spillway. like this like spillway out in the middle of nowhere. Ten, Ten car is cool. I watch another 10 car guy too. Yeah, Tenkara is pretty neat. Uh, a, a brand, actually Tenkara, it wasn't Tenkara though, it was somebody that was selling like kind of unique things. They sent me a Tenkara rod and some other little things early early on in my YouTube, you know, career. And um, I would used it with no luck. Um, but it's kind of neat. I mean, the idea that you can have it so simply. Mm -hmm. um yeah, for people who don't know, Tenkara is like a extendable, very similar to a fly rod. It's a Japanese, right? Yeah. And the line is attached to the rod. Like it doesn't come off. Well, I guess it comes off maybe at some point. It doesn't, no. It's no. tied It's tied to the top. Okay, but you could you change know. it out like if you had to. Oh, yeah, you can put new yeah. line on if you break the line. But there's no reel or anything. It's just like a, I think the lines vary in length from like say nine feet to like whatever, 20 feet. And you just kind of just like. Yeah, it's a very short line, and you're basically using the the rod <clears throat> just to fight the the fish. Yeah, sort of sort of to tire it out, and then you kind of work your way up the line, grab the line with your left hand or whatever. That'd be cool for like sunnies or something <clears throat> in like a little pond. I like, think so. Um, what's that little pond that's kind of by you, in between? Not like before you get to the steel bridge. Like if you're coming from your house, you know the steel bridge there, Logos Point Road. I'm not in Huber Woods there. Um, it, it, uh, like if you were going to Hartshorn near Highlands. Okay. From oh, yeah, Locust yeah, Point Road, you yeah. cross that blue steel bridge. <clears throat> yeah. It's before, like, closer to you. I know exactly you. what you're talking about. It's like, uh, it feeds into that. Yeah. It's I just, don't know what it's called. It's, it's just a little pond with, on your left hand side. Yeah. It's, um, 914. I don't know what area code that is. <laughs> It um it is stocked like it's stocked with trout. Is it really? Apparently, yeah. I've I mean, fished there before. I've seen mostly snapping turtles. <laughs> it it seems like a place you would just take you know your kid or something. Yeah, that's what I've done. Like you know with some corn or power yeah. power bait usually is the easiest thing. Um, but like if you could get sunnies like on Tenkara there, that'd, that'd be, be like a lot of fun. Yeah, with a little popper or something. Yeah, or even snappers. You know, 
find a dock and just snapper blues. Yeah, yeah. That would, I actually tried that and I didn't get any. No, I I I like fishing for snappers and I like eating snappers. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like a September thing. They're good bait for uh, fluke. That's what everyone says. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You kill it? No. So you just hook you it. Just and hook it like through the through the mouth. Fish know, through on the, the bottom, the, right? Through the chin, like out to the top. Yeah, you know, like a weight, and then the yeah, like, like a, a three feet. foot leader or something. Yeah, maybe not even that much. Two feet. Yeah. Have you ever fished down by the dock in uh, Archon Woods? No, I've been down there though. It's it's a hike. You have yeah. to hike it. So it's one of those things. Like yeah, it's definitely a bit of a commitment. Mm -hmm. But when my daughter was was more in a fun stage. You know, now she's 15, so it's not so much fun. <laughs> Hanging out with your dad's not cool when, yeah. you're, when you're 15. She used to like to go fishing, and we would go down there and get snappers, and she would like to eat them. And so we would get them and grill them up, you know, just kind of clean them up, uh, clean them out real quick. And uh, you don't have to scale them or anything. Mm -hmm. A little garlic salt. I feel like bluefish already, like, do they have scales? Like a, like even a they, big bluefish? I, I don't think they do. Yeah, they're like a really smooth kind of. Yeah. I don't think they do. It's not like a bass where you got scales on a bass. Yeah. And, oh, man, scaling fish sucks. Yeah. Well, every time I've eaten bass, they've just been filleted. Yeah. You just leave the scales and just fillet the skin right off. Yeah. But, you know, I like fish skin. I do, too. It's good. It's good for you, I think, too. It's got yeah. good fats in it. Yeah. Like salmon skin. I guess salmon, they don't have scales. I don't think they do. They, they remind me of trout, where yeah. trout don't have scales. Right. Trout when, season opens on Saturday. Yeah, it's funny. I used to fish for trout when we had the house in Vermont. So it was, uh, so we bought this house in the, back in 2006, I think. Yeah, we sold it around 2015, but um, it had a road that went through it. So you had property on one side of the road and property on the other side hmm. of the road. And then you could walk down to the river by walking through this hay field and then sort of down this trail. And I had a little uh, uh, Honda, like 125 or something. And then I also had a little four. I still have the four wheeler. And I would, always, I would always just wake up like you. I wake up before everybody. I would push the motorcycle across the road so I wouldn't wake everybody up and go fishing. Mm -hmm. And it was great because it was just all, it's so easy. Like once something is so easy, you just do it. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so I'm here. And at the time, there was no TV in that. We never had a TV in the house. We never had, we never had cable, so we never had internet internet up there. And so you're always making yourself uh, busy. It was actually really great because the boys, all three of the boys who are now in their twenties, grew up a lot of time outside. Yeah, you know, making fires, hiking by themselves, going up the rivers by themselves, and. Um, I would fish that river and I tell you, sometimes you would think there were no fish in that river at all. And then some days you think, holy cow, it's just full of fish. Yeah. And so I would always pinch the barbs and I would throw the fish back unless somehow it like sucked it way down. And you're yeah, like, this yeah. is just a mortal wound. Forget it. I'm taking it. And um, there were big fish. It was the third branch of the White River, uh, which is, um, that's maybe uh, like 40 minutes north of Killington. That's, okay. That's the area where we were. And, uh, but that, that's the thing. Like <laughs> if I had a house on the Navasink river, I'd probably fish the Navasink river a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem is you need a few million dollars to have a house on the Navasink oh, river. Yeah. I just saw, uh, you know, it got fed to me on Instagram, like one of these New Jersey pages and they were showing uh, Bon Jovi's house. Crazy. I saw him, you know, so the funny thing is, Back in the early 2000s, I used to see him, maybe even before 2000, I used to see him all the time running by my house because he would run down, he would run down Whooper Will. Mm -hmm. He would, you know, stick to the dirt roads. Yeah, yeah. And so I would see him on a regular basis. I never really said anything because I don't know what to say. So what am I going to say? Hey. hey. <laughs> you know? um, but then I hadn't seen him in probably 15 or 20 years. And then I was working on the garden, maybe two or three weeks, kind of prepping, just cleaning that area out. And he ran by with who I think must have been his daughter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, because I don't think he lives there. It's his house. Yeah. I think he's in like Long Island, like out in the Hamptons now, mostly. 
Yeah, I, I assume that, yeah, he's probably got crazy a couple yeah. properties. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that he's in the city, too. I mm-hmm. think his, his daughter's like a major equestrian. Okay. But it was funny, when we moved to this area in the uh, mid-90s, I think, early 90s, um, I guess Bon Jovi was still a pretty young dude. Mm-hmm. And he had a, a younger brother who opened a restaurant in... Um, in Seabright, opened a restaurant bar. I always heard something that like he was involved in Angelica's or something. Well, or no, oh no, it was a uh, dive. I think that's what it was. Yeah, 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 dive. Yeah, so he, I remember because my wife's sister was a big fan of Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, we have to go to this restaurant. Maybe we'll I see I went him. there once. It was nothing. Yeah, well, and the then funny closed. thing is it was full of smoke. That was before the no smoking law. Oh, was. wow. And I just remember like, holy cow, this place is just like, just like an ashtray. Yeah. What year did they? It had to be, geez, it had to be like in the early, like maybe 1999 or something like that. Yeah, because like I was working in bars and restaurants probably starting in 2002 or something like that. And it had already been banned. Okay. It's a great thing. I mean, I just remember like. Oh, yeah. It's funny because I'll tell my kids uh, when I was, you know, 15, 13, 12, we would go to the game room and the game room would just be full of cigarette smoke. And it would oh, just yeah. be like, you know, pinball games and mm-hmm. asteroids and things like that. Like, it, it's just kind of funny. Like, you would never think of like a 10 year old kid walking around this smoke filled place yeah. with, a variety of people because, you know, you have 10 year olds in there then you have like 20 year olds mm-hmm. and there's just a huge difference between a 10 year old and a 20 year old. Oh yeah. You know what they're up to. Yeah. You remember going to like what you, you know, you go to red lobster and they say you want to smoking or not yeah. smoking. It's like thinking back, like that was fucking crazy. hundred percent. And who goes to a restaurant and like you have to smoke at your table in, in a restaurant. Like, I mean, Back then it was normal, but now it just seems insane. It, it, it I totally. can see a bar, like a bar is one thing. You sit at a, at a bar, have a drink and a cigarette or a cigar or whatever. That, I can compute that. But like at the table at a restaurant. I remember going to restaurants and being like, oh my God, the smoke coming from that table. They were in the smoking section, but meanwhile, it's only it's like one right. table over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we used to always go to Tony's Pizza in Pompton Lakes. It's, it's still there. It was a staple, though. And um, I think the first, like, six tables were smoking. And then the other six tables closest to the, you know, the pizza parlor uh, were non-smoking. Mm-hmm. But there was nothing separating it. I mean, yeah, no. And then, and then where the, you know, the Pac-Man game and the Asteroids game was right in the doorway. That had, so it had to be the, when you walk in was a smoking section. Because anybody playing that game was generally smoking and mm-hmm. all those games had cigarette burns in them next to the, next to the little oh, controllers. Yeah. yeah. It was a crazy time. Man. When I was in college in West Virginia, you could still smoke. So it was like the bars were just full of smoke. That's what Walter was saying about Pennsylvania. Cause he went, he went to school in Pennsylvania and yep. he goes, it was so crazy going to a bar that'd be just full of smoke. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, no wonder so many people like in college smoke because it's just, you could do it anywhere. It's, you know, in West Virginia, it was cheap. Like get, uh, camel lights have, I don't know if they still have, but they were called art packs. So it would be like, a an artist would design the, pa- the artwork on the pack of cigarettes and you would get two packs of cigarettes for like $4. Wow. Yeah. And this is like 2007, eight, nine. What do you think a pack of cigarettes is today? Like 10 bucks? Yeah. I think they're about 10 bucks. That's wild. Yeah. Holy cow. That's like a, a an expensive habit. Yeah. I think back then, like here in New Jersey, they were probably like maybe six bucks. Um, you know, the tax, the tobacco tax in West Virginia is much, much lower. You could probably get some like off brand, you know, back then for like a dollar or something, like a Paul Mall or whatever, Mavericks. <laughs> Mavericks are merits. Remember yeah, Mavericks? yeah. We used to get our cigarettes from the police station. This is how, hmm. how long I go back. It was a, um, it was a 
cigarette machine where you'd put 50 oh, cents yeah. in and then you'd pull that little thing at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But it was just crazy. So you had the, um, it's like an acrylic handle. You know, so you, yeah. Yeah. Kind of stained. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Like a yellow, yeah, yellow yeah. stained acrylic handle. You'd pull that. And then you'd go up to uh, Bogart's and you get a 25 cent hamburger. That's how old <laughs> I am. And then you'd get two, uh, two of those, um, oh, Jolly Ranchers mm -hmm. for a penny. Jeez. It was crazy. That was like, it was a fun little town. I grew up in Pompton Lakes and you could, you know, so you could go to Bogart's or you could go to um, Tony's Pizza. And, uh, you know, I still know the guys from r &M Hardware. I haven't been there in years. But if I go there, like, because my sister lives in the town, she'll say, oh, Jeff said hi, you know, because the guy up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, you know, I just knew him as a kid. And then if I have time, I'll stop in there. And it's kind of a cool little town. I was actually wondering about the place where you, you went fishing. Was there a town there? Yeah, it's, um, you know, the river is so big that it, uh, let's see. Pulaski. Pulaski is the name of the town. I think the real people there call it Pulaski. Um, and I I think that's like uh oh, it's a pretty pretty area. Yeah, this is. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so like where we are, I don't think is technically in Pulaski, like where we fish. Um, but like I kind of just refer to the whole section of the river as you know and that's probably wrong but like it goes there's altmar up here which is another little town and there's i think king kings something kingsland now but, the homeowner is the homeowner there while you're renting the place or no so douglas and salmon run actually owns all like a bunch of different really lodges so it's one of their lodges that house is a lodge yeah Wow, that's nice. What's the price on something like that? So they, rather than like price it by the house, they price it by the person. So uh, it it depends on how many people and like what time of year. But when we were there, it's 80 bucks a night per person. That's not bad. No, and it's nice inside. So how, so everybody had their own room? Uh, so there's four rooms. So yeah, the, in this situation, everybody had their own room. Nice and kitchen? And it sleeps up to seven. Yeah, I mean it's it's a little bit dated, but you know it's like old wood mode cabinets. Sure. Um, but you know they have all the pots and pans, and the, you know all the there's a coffee maker and a microwave and a who did the cooking? Um, so we each kind of like cooked a different night. So I um, I made a bunch of pizzas, like homemade dough, everything, nice. and brought I you know I par cooked them, froze them. And then brought those up. So I, I made those the one night. Matt made tacos the one night. Um, and then Matt and Will grilled up some. They bought these crazy steaks from a butcher, like ribeyes, like this big and like nice. this thick. It was I couldn't even finish it. And I always finish my food. Outside grill? Yeah, so they have a grill. So uh, nice. Matt grilled up the steaks and Will cooked up some, uh, what do we have, asparagus, sweet potatoes. That was a good, good nice. one. And then the next night, uh, Will cooked up some burgers. Had a few drinks? Yeah. What were you drinking? I bought a uh, Founders All Day IPA. Okay. It's pretty good. Just a basic kind of... Yeah, it's of, like a 4.5 maybe? Yeah. Like, so it's like a session? I don't want anything like too high test. Um, and then actually, so I stopped at Tops, which is like, a, I guess, a upstate New York grocery store. They have a Tops in town. And... Uh, so I had to grab a couple of things and um, they sell beer in the supermarkets up there. And I saw, remember the Arizona iced tea, the green tea in that yeah. quintessential can. They have like a hard version of it now. Of and like, Arizona? Yeah. The marketing just got me and wow. I saw it. And I'm like, I got to buy that. So I bought it. I had a couple of those. They, you know, so the first one I had after having a couple of those mm -hmm. IPAs and IPAs like wreck your palate. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. It messes with your taste buds because it's so bitter. Um, so the first one I had, I was like, wow, I was like, this is pretty good. I'm like, it tastes just like, uh, you know, the actual green tea. But I would think it's pretty sweet, isn't it? Mm. I guess the green tea is not as sweet as their other ones. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Okay. Um, and then I had one, like, whatever, a night or two later, and it was the first 
drink that I had. And I was like, yeah, this doesn't taste that good. <laughs> <laughs> Those seems like they, they seem like they could hit you pretty hard, pretty quick. Yeah. They're like, I think 5% or something. And they, but they go down like iced tea. Yeah. You know? So you just drink that and yeah. And then you're bound to have like a horrible hangover from all the sugar and yeah, all the sugar. That's the thing. So I, I've told you that I'm on a, it's almost like a two month. The last time I had a drink was the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not quitting drinking, but um, I'm just going to see how long I can go. I do feel like I feel better, mm -hmm. you know, because I was probably having one, two, three drinks a day. It was just sort of like it's the end of the day. I'll have a beer or two. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. It's been that way for a lot of people for a very long time. Yeah, you know? so I just sort of fell into that, and then. The problem with that is you're, you're not, you're probably not going to do any exercise after you have a beer or two. Definitely not. So that's the big change. I'll exercise or I'll go on, I'll go on bike rides where I come back where it's dark out now mm -hmm. where I wouldn't have done that before, but it's a, it's kind of a cool thing. I'm, we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, I know that like you don't drink or you don't eat a lot of sugar. Or you don't drink much either. No, I'm off the wagon right now and I'm paying for it. I feel like hell. You're still off the wagon for sugar? Yeah. Well, then it was like a, it got Easter. Oh, Easter. And, yeah, right. yeah. And now I'm going away to Dominican Republic in uh, whatever, 10 days or something. But I, so I got to get back on track like soon. After the Dominican yeah, Republic. Yeah. I feel like I need to like get back on track for at least, at least the week before. And the sugars are really, that, that really affects you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where do you feel it? Everywhere. Just like lack of energy or? Sh yeah. Sh and then sore, I get, uh, you know, my joints get, sore get joints. swollen. Sore joints. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, my elbows will be sore. So I'm wondering, like, I have to say, I do eat a lot of honey. That's mm -hmm. sure. It's still sugar. Oh, yeah. I, even like, you know, the sugar that's in fruit, it affects me the same way. Really? It, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I like fruit. Yeah, me too. Huh. Well, I'm probably not going to go that way out. It's tough. So what made you decide or what made you realize it was sugar? Uh, Did you go to the doctor or something? Or No, like I heard, you know, heard about keto and I had wanted to lose some weight and then just did that and then realized like, oh man, I feel so much better when I don't eat sugar. And then, then you know, when you do cheat and you eat Sugar, seeing the difference between like, oh man, when I eat it, it does this. It's like, holy crap. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm sort of contemplating doing um, like one of those uh, 48 hour fasts. Mm -hmm. And then right after that fast, maybe doing a, I can't see myself ever going completely off sugar though. Changing my diet. I don't really have a bad, like, I'm not the kind of guy who looks for dessert. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more of like um, salt, salt and savory yeah, as opposed yeah. to, uh, to sweets. But um, just being older, you know, I'm 56 years old, so I'm always thinking, okay, what do I want to do to get to that next level uh, or, or at least just maintain? Yeah. I'm in a kind of a fun... Uh, app right now with some friends it's uh it's this thing called move where you do exercise and you get points mm -hmm. and it's definitely a motivator because uh, it's so funny because some of the people on my team aren't putting up any points <laughs> uh one of them was walter but walter was so busy at work yeah. he just he's like dad i'm not gonna but he wanted to be on i asked him I said you guys want to be on this team anyway um so like just to put it in perspective a three mile walk would be, or a one mile walk would be three points. I saw you put up that story. I'm like, I felt like some of them seemed like the proportions were off. It was like, man, I'm like, a walk is only, you know, a three mile walk or whatever is only this much, but then this is yeah, because then yard work, like ninety minutes of yard work, was I think almost was, was either like eight, eight points, points or, or twelve. Points. I think yeah. it was eight points, and I can do ninety minutes of yard work. In easy. the blink of an eye, yeah, yeah, it's like that flies ninety minutes. It is good. Exercise, but I would say that it's not the same thing as exercising, even though you're, you know, I was, I was moving topsoil. So that is pretty good workout, Yeah, but it's not the same thing as actually keeping your heart rate up mm -hmm. uh, on a, um, you know, for, for a 30 minute time 
spell like if you're lifting weights because if you're lifting weights and you're not taking big breaks your heart rate's way up there oh yeah yeah they say that's one of the best exercises for men is just lifting weights i've started to lift weights 30 minutes every day now just because they say that's the best thing to do for your joints as you get older Mm -hmm. i keep telling my wife i was like you have to lift weights yeah yeah because it you know your your bones naturally get weaker so it's like got to strengthen up everything around them too and the trick is to kind of lift weights smart, you know, less weight, more reps. Mm-hmm. Cause once you get injured, you're done. You injure your shoulder. You're not doing, you know, then you're out. Oh yeah. I, I flip flop back and forth between trying to lift weights and not. And, and right now I'm not, but you know, I would like for some reason bench press, like just jacks up my, my, uh, shoulder. Yeah. And like my collarbone. What are you working out with? You doing too much? Mm, I would, you know, think that it wasn't, you know, I was able to do like, you know, at least 10 reps kind of thing, but then it would just like tweak, you tweak something. And then it's like, well, I'm not going to be benching for a while. That's the problem. So like I'll, I only, I work out with maybe 120 pounds maybe, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'll do a lot of reps and just focus on the form. And then I'll do inclines I'll usually That's use, what I would do is is um, go from flat to incline to sort of, I guess, take some of that pressure off of the. With inclines, I'm using really lightweight because I'm using dumbbells. Mm-hmm. And so I don't have anything between 20 and 40, and I don't want to use 40s for inclines. It's just so awkward yeah. to try to get into that position. I mean, <laughs> I started, uh, I'm still building the sauna. <laughs> so my next project to ask about that <laughs> yeah um actually i have to order plywood i want to put in a, an order for uh, to make the three sheets of yeah i guess we can talk a little bit about woodworking yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is a fishing podcast now <laughs> um so to get started on the sauna uh, jeff ordered uh just about um 170 feet of of a uh, four quarter poplar for me. Was it 170 feet? I forget. Uh, we went over this whole thing. I don't remember. I actually just, I had that note. I just threw it away. I thought it was 270. Might've been 270. And uh, I yeah, turned, it must've been because it was like 500 bucks. Okay. Yeah. And I turned most of that into shiplap for the inside of the sauna. And for the framing, I'm going to use 24 mil Baltic birch plywood uh, because I want to, insulate it with two inch styrofoam foil face insulation. And I want to create it as a kit that can be taken apart if I have to, but also moved around easily. And I think once everything gets tied together with the half inch sheathing on the half inch plywood sheathing on the outside, it'd be plenty, plenty strong enough. And, um, so you're going to what double them up? I'm not, I'm going to, I mean, that's basically an inch. Yeah. It's an, I'm going to double them up in the corners mm-hmm. and, and, and run them in different ways. So I, so I've got a good purchase with whatever fastener I use. Cause the idea is to have like two ends and then the front and back will be made out of two parts. And so it'll be six pieces that get attached together. And then the top will be like two tops that sort of drop in place and rest on cleats. Yep. And, uh, so We'll, um, I don't know, if you order that this week, next week, we can cut it on the street big before you yeah. go away. Yeah. So that'd be cool. We can start a video on that. Mm-hmm. The, the idea is even if we just cut them in half, so I'm not trying to rip a 24 mil four by eight piece of uh, uh, Baltic birch by myself on the plywood, on the oh, table. Yeah. So that's a... How long or how tall are the... Yeah, so I could do a cross cut first, maybe. Uh, probably seven feet. Yeah, we could set up the, there's like a cursor on the street big that'll reference the top. You could just do repeated rips. All right. I mean, I was thinking just doing one rip. Could cut two sheets at the same time. There we go. That's a good video. Can you cut three? It's a full full three inches. Not of, yeah, not of 24 millimeter. If it was three quarter, you could. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, Three quarters, what, 18 millimeter? 20 millimeter? 24 or 22. I think it's 24 millimeter. Three quarter. No, not three quarter. Oh, 18. 18 is three quarter. 18, yeah. So it must is, have like a 50 millimeter 
uh, yeah. max. Okay, that makes sense. Because you could do three sheets of three quarters, so that's... Wait. Oh, no, 16 times three would be 48. Must be 60 millimeters or something like that. So th- the idea is I was thinking maybe we could cut it into like uh, 13 inch, you know, 13 inch, 12 inch or whatever, just, uh, you know, thinking of the kerf because I basically am going to rip it at two inches or just a little light at two inches. Um, but I think if we just rip it in half, I can take it from there. Something be- that's just manageable. Just, yeah, two feet is manageable. Mm-hmm. Four feet. Just, that's a lot. That's a heavy. Oh, yeah. That's something heavy, so. You can't see the fence, like, to, you know. Exactly. So, I'll get started on that project, uh, or get restarted on that, and then um, I'd like to have that done in the next four to six weeks, just to use it, Mm -hmm. because that's part of the whole um, fitness routine with the cold plunge, then the sauna, and apparently... The benefits, the health benefits from sauna, I think if you do, I think if you do three 15 minute sits at 185 degrees or above a week, that lowers your risk of heart disease by like 40%. Hmm. Some, some crazy number. I mean, you can look at it, but I've heard so many good things about it. Um, And that's another thing that you get points for if you're in that move app. I think you get you get like two points for a 20 minute sauna. It also just feels nice, you know? When's the, now you, you've done saunas a few times, like yeah. when you go away, that's when I've done them. Last time I did it was actually when I was in the Dominican last time, like two years ago. Yeah, you know, they have like hydrotherapy. So we did hydrotherapy, you know, there's like a pool with all these like crazy jets and whatever. So you can uh, stand under this like waterfall that's like really powerful kind of thing. And then we did a massage and then sauna. Saunas are great. Yeah. So when you went from the sauna, did you go right into a cold shower? Mm, no. I love that. I took a shower, but yeah, it probably it wasn't cold. So occasionally we'll go up to this place in Vermont, in Woodstock, Vermont, and they've got um, like an Olympic-sized pool and a kind of a tiny little gym and a nice sauna. And that, that was the thing that made me say to myself, I really want to get that. You know, because then if, if I can uh, just sort of buckle down and, and make that, there's no reason why I can't. It's just a matter of whatever, just yeah. doing it. It's like you said, nothing nothing to it but to do it. Yeah, easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, like my kitchen. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got My house has got so many things I've got to do to it. It's. I think we're going to try to do the basement this year, too. Yeah, I think I'm finally going to rip down the garage in the back. You have like an outbuilding? Yeah, it's a detached garage. Can you like rip it down? 20 by 30. It's like, yeah, like this, the roof is caving in. It's It was like totally jacked up before we we bought the house. Were you ever thinking of remodeling it? Um, Yeah, but it like, it's so bad that I, I don't think there's anything really salvageable. And if you take it down, uh, well, the nice thing is that the building is on the, on the lot, you know, mm-hmm. it's grandfathered in, so you probably couldn't rebuild it if you took it down. You know, if you take yeah. it, yeah. It's honestly, it's it's like too big. You I know? got you. Like I don't want to put a shop back there. I, I got, got I got this shop. Yep. Um, to have two shops just seems a bit insane, and it's like I already work enough. I don't need to be going outside and working at home. Um, but it takes up a good chunk of our lot. You know what I mean? So I'd rather just take it down. Turn it into to- lawn. Uh, I want to move like the fence. Yeah. So basically it's, it's in the backyard. So I'll show you. It's funny how you can type in something that makes zero sense. And okay, it, uh, so now I can. Yeah. So here's right. my house. You probably driven by. Um, now, is that the building? How do I get to uh, this? That. So you're saying you've got a lot of stone in your lawn? Because I can see it there. That's like the driveway. Okay. So yeah, so here's the here's the house. This is 36. This is the driveway. I got you. But this all back here that, that looks like grass. Yeah. 
it's just grass that's growing on top of gravel because they, they hadn't maintained it for so long. You know what I mean? Like it was originally all gravel. Oh, I got you. And the grass just grew on top of it because they never that's got rid hard, of the leaves or any of that stuff. That'd be a hard thing to deal with because you have to get rid of the gravel, don't you? To Well, so what I did is I actually put ties like from here over to here and from here. Um, I made like a little thing like this and I filled that with gravel. So I, I, I basically made like a new gravel driveway in the back that goes yeah. back to the garage. Um, but yeah, this is just, I mean, you can see how much it's, it's the footprint is almost the size of my house. Will you put a fence up it, to divide your house from the, the road? Yeah. So right now there's just this fence right here. I got you. So that you want to push that out. Yeah. So I want to basically have the fence go like this. Yeah, that'll be nice. Nice privacy fence. Yeah, so the neighbor has a chain link fence that that ends right here. So basically, if I just followed that line, and what would you this end like up? A big put, you know, there's push. that fence company that you go right past when you go to work. Yeah, was it front? Not frontier. Something like that. Maybe it is. It's no, right on Liberty. The bike path. Liberty. Yeah, they did. Um, they did Rob's fence. They did my in laws' fence across the street. They did a really good job. But I, I, I don't know. I might do it myself. Fences are freaking expensive. Everything's expensive. Yeah. Uh, you hire anybody to do any, like, it's just so expensive. I know. I mean, there's some things that I'll hire out. I tell you who, who does great work is Lou. The oh, painter. yeah. I hired him to do the painting because I just don't like to be high up on a ladder mm -hmm. anymore. And um, he did such an awesome job. He's great. Yeah. I was, that was something where, uh, first of all, I thought he was very fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I feel like he always gives you more than you pay for. He's one of those guys. That's why I, I was like, wow, this is, I was so happy with the project. You think like day one, he's going to be there painting. And it's like three days later, he's still prepping everything. Yeah, that's, yeah, you could tell when somebody does, because that's what painting is. It's mm -hmm. all the prep. Yeah. And, so, and I mean, he put down drop cloths on, on all the shrubs and he just did an awesome job. So I did hire that out. I'll hire out electrical work, but most most carpentry work, I'm just not going to hire out because nobody will do a small job that I need done. So I just have to do it myself anyway. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny in that I've had, like I've bought, like I bought a stove. This is years ago. Of course, every time we buy something, or like you, you think you're just going to have something done. You got to take the door off I'm doing, and the I'm, handrail. Yeah, I'm, I'm cutting the countertop. Like, yep. We ended up having to trim the Corian countertop. We've got these old, they're not pretty Corian countertops, but I'm sold on Corian. I like it. It's yeah. just so user friendly. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you we, can ref you can sand it. And yeah, you can sand down yeah. to the marks or whatever. Um, but I had to cut the Corian, and that's I'm sure you know what that's no fun cutting on with a circular saw. It's kind of a yeah. mess and smelly. Yeah, it kind of wants to chip a little bit. Yeah. Well, that'll be nice if you take that down and put up, uh, especially with the dogs. I mean, you, yeah. it'd be nice to have the dogs where you don't have to worry about the road. Yeah, we have this whole side yard. I mean, you see, it's like almost like a third of the lot. Yeah. That's unusable because who wants to be over here by the highway? How how close can you go to the road with the fence? Well, you can see his fence is right here. I got you. Okay. And that's uh, he had that fence redone recently. Not to say that it's within, you know, whatever the spec but this is where it is over there maybe 10 feet from the so oh, like yeah. probably splitting this lilac yeah and i'm talking about maybe residing the house because it's man it's ugly would you do that or you would hire somebody to do that i would hire somebody yeah it's this old aluminum siding with these stupid awnings But yeah, you can see like it looks like they had gravel all the way out here. So, so do you think that you would just get a couple of yards of topsoil and put that on top of the gravel? Because I mean, how are you going to dig that gravel out? I don't know. I think maybe, I think that's probably what I would do. It's great up a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it'll, um, yeah, it'll probably start working. Over here, it's real mossy and soft. Because it's just always wet. Huh. Yeah, and that's where my sump pump discharges. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised. Um, 
I'm surprised you're getting as much water as you're getting in the basement. Yeah, I've got a pretty deep basement. Really? Yeah. So, um, Do you have a Bilco door to get in from the outside? Yeah, in the back. Um, yeah, the the ceiling in the basement is eight or nine feet. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So you could build up off that if you wanted to. You could frame off of it if you wanted to be off the concrete a little, right? Does that make any sense? Well, oh, like add a floor to the... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Then you got just trapping all that stuff in there, I feel like. That's true. And I don't know. I need, I guess, a French drain. And you got to dig it down to something. The pump. problem is the, the water table just comes up, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not coming in from the walls. It's coming from below. Wow. I don't know how you just need another sump pump, I guess. Two more sump pumps. Yeah, I don't know. We, we got lucky with the... Um the guy who built our house, he built it in the 60s. He put in French drains so the water goes away from the house and mm -hmm. it's on a hill. It's kind of built on a hill. The only, I think I mentioned it maybe on this podcast, the only time we, we got water in the house is when I dug a, a path from the house to the barn. Oh, yeah. Then we had a rainstorm and it came right in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, it was a mess. It happened really fast. Yeah, the Pulaski house is kind of like yours, where the in the front it's like, uh, looks like single story, and then the back it looks like a two story. Yeah, that's it's it's a pretty cool design. He yeah. did a good job with it, and we need to take advantage of that with that that downstairs space because we're really not. It's sort of like a catch all right mm -hmm. now. That's just what happens. I mean, like life goes by. You have all these grand plans, and uh, but there's no reason why I couldn't do it. It's, I think what I need to do is is um, maybe take a month off of doing YouTube projects and just work on the house for a month. Yeah. It, because, you know, it's a weird, it's a, a YouTube project. Like I'm building these end tables now that would really take me like start to finish two or three days, but they'll take me like two weeks making it for a YouTube project right. because you're videoing everything, editing everything getting plans made for it. So, yeah, maybe I'll just take a, a little break. Maybe even in the summer, because that seems to be a slow time with YouTube anyway. And yeah, I guess everybody's outside. Yeah, I find that. I was watching um, Jackie, who I know has worked with you. Yeah. I was watching her uh, barn space. And I almost messaged her, but I didn't want to... Um, but maybe I'd talk about it here. She's, she's got one of these sh barns that get delivered. Yeah. Like a Amish shed kind yeah. of thing. And, um, I was looking at the ceiling and I'm thinking, um, if she's listening to the podcast, she should maybe spray foam that herself with a uh, closed cell spray foam. Yeah. It looked like it had a uh, rigid foam, like between the sheathing. That might the just be the back of the sheathing. Uh, okay. I think that's what that is. It almost looked like it had like a foil a back on it. That's exactly what the shed looked like that I bought. Oh, really? So the back is like this foil mm -hmm. kind of, it's a, it looks like, like a aluminum. vapor barrier kind of thing. So I don't know. It might work as a vapor barrier, but I'm, I'm assuming any shed you buy is not going to have a vented roof. Yeah. I built a couple sheds online. There's freaking water dripping in through that. Uh, yeah. Oh, huh. son of a bitch. I guess that's an active leak. I thought that was an inactive leak. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what the hell was I saying? You, were built, oh, you I, built a couple of sheds? Yeah, like online, you know, like on Stoltzfus shed. You know, okay. Design, you could do it, design yeah. it, and like it makes a 3D. It's pretty cool. With, and I would do all the options, 12 inches on the center for the floor. And um, do you, I mean, you could build those things like crazy. It's wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to um, put something like that on the land that I have in Vermont because it seems like it'd be just pretty easy to do. That was my thought. Like, if I knock down the garage, I could always just plop something like that back there. Well, you, you know? might want to do that. Just yeah, to have I need somewhere cool. for like the lawnmower and all yeah, that stuff. Just a place to put stuff. But the um, I used that closed cell spray foam. I ended up going with these Tiger Tiger tanks, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they look like propane tanks. Yeah. And uh, what I didn't know before I got into this, and I did a lot of research, and I, I did do it when I went to use it, 
was this stuff needs to be applied at like 80 degrees. Oh, wow. So your tanks need, are like mid seventies, like 76 degrees between so anything higher than the mid seventies. So, uh, I did some research and I ended up doing uh, a video on that project and it blew up. It's got more than a million views on wow. YouTube and it more than paid for the tank. The tanks are expensive. Like each kit is like 600 bucks. Yeah. It looks like spray contact and it's, that's the same thing. You know, okay. those tanks are like, yeah, four or five, 600 bucks. Exactly. So there's the two tanks. I ended up building a little oven that I could put an electric heater in that was on a dolly so I can move it around. Hmm. The whole trick to that pro, that DIY spray foam is prep, prep, prep everything. Once you start once spraying. You, you're not going to stop because even though they say you can stop and start again, but you really can't. That's like those cans of spray foam. Yeah. You, you know, can, they say you can that you could do it. No, no. Unless you like, you have to like cut the thing, you know, cut the straw and, but then, Yeah. But I was looking at her shop, which looks like a cool, it's going to be a nice little shop. Yeah. I was thinking that's a, that's probably what I would do mm -hmm. is spray foam it. Or. Flash and bat even. So, so can you, wait, flash and bat. Flash and bat is like you do a uh, spray foam, like a real light coat, just like sealing all the cracks yep. and you put bats in. Okay. You know, fiberglass or whatever. Can you. Is, is this a solution if you don't want to vent a shed roof? Can you insulate it and then go over it with a heavy plastic? Um, I don't think it matters because you probably have gable vents anyway. You know what I mean? Um, you do have gable vents, but that's not getting into your, between your rafters. Yeah, but if it's insulated, uh, yeah, if it's insulated, it's going to be whatever the outside is doing, no? I don't know. I'm not a... Uh, I've, I, I ended up doing that. I, I talked with, I think it was my brother-in-law years ago about that. And, um, that's what I ended up doing when I finished my wife's like she shed office mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go the whole spray from foam route again. That's probably, I probably could have made a lot of money doing the spray from foam route with YouTube AdSense because the video that's got a million views Paid, paid out really well. Yeah. Uh, it's got like, um, it's got a pretty high uh, RPM. I think it's almost $6 every thousand. Wow. Every thousand views where like a short, one of my shorts only gets three cents every thousand views. And is that based on like the content in the video that Google assigns it or it's just random? I think maybe because it has more to do with home. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm the worst person when it comes to how YouTube works, but I do know that like financial videos and real estate videos have like the higher RPMs. Really? Yeah. If you're on there talking about how Bitcoin can make you a, yeah, I just sold my Dogecoin. Did you? Yeah. How'd you do? Not bad. I, I made my money back m many times. I've already cashed out a bunch of money, but I, it, uh, you know, it's been low for a long time and recently, as Bitcoin got back to like the all time high, I think it actually, it hit a new all time high recently and within the last couple of weeks, Dogecoin obviously followed yep. suit all the crypto and it was at like 21 cents. Yeah. It went as high as like 75 cents, almost to a dollar. I wow. think so. Yeah. 75 cents. It hit like maybe three years ago. And I, I was holding on to it at that time. I was in like the tens and tens of thousands of dollars that I was up at that wow. point. And I cashed some of it out, but I just sold the rest of it for like almost six grand. Nice. That's going to be my ripping down the garage money. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to hire somebody to rip down the garage? Oh, you have yeah, to, right? Yeah. So they're going to come in with an excavator? I don't know. I called these guys who, remember I had those doors for the spray booth? Yeah. And I, I just had somebody come pick them up and they gave me a card and it's like, you know, scrap metal and demolition. So I gave him a call because I don't care who does it and how they do it. As long as they get it, get it out of there. Well, it's a bit of a dangerous job because it's a big building and uh, yeah. it's also close to your neighbor's house. So you don't want it falling over the fence. And Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, they, if they rip the, the roof off and then just take the, you know, take each wall down. I mean, the roof is already caving in on the one side. How old is that building? Uh, it seems like part of it is like 
at the youngest from like the 60s. That's that would be if you're looking at it the right side and then the left side uh it's from the 80s. Okay. Yeah, like there's a paralam in there and stuff. Okay. That was probably put in after the fact, but yeah, it's it leaks. The roof on the original side is caving in and just looks so bad. Yeah, it would be good to get get that done. Yeah. And then you can focus on the yard, get that fence up, and yeah. work on the lawn. Yep. Yeah, that's my whole thing. It's like I don't want to get too into anything before I do all the 10 steps beforehand. You do all this lawn work, and then you're going to have the excavator or whatever comes in there, yeah, the dumpster, yeah. just tear it all up. That's like the front door. I'm like, I should really just paint the door or like get a new door, build a door. And then I'm like, oh, the siding right next to it looks like shit. I'm like, what am I going to waste my time fixing the door for? Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I've got so. some jobs like that. That's like my kitchen. My kitchen just needs to be totally like, I'm thinking like, why do I want to do my kitchen if I want to rip out the kitchen floor? Because I could easily build some cabinets. Yeah. But then there's like, and, and we've talked about this before where I could do that job very easy if nobody lived in the house. Mm -hmm. Trying to do a kitchen when you've got five people in the house is just a, you know, forget it. Yeah. I was, I was telling that to my wife the other day. I'm like, you know, the cabinets and everything, that's not a problem. It's like all the other stuff. How am I going to paint the ceiling with all of our crap in there? Yeah. You know? And if I can't get it all done in one shot, like I want to be able to leave the plastic over everything. But you have, if we all have to wake up tomorrow and make coffee and have breakfast and just can't do it. No, that makes it, 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 you know, if, if you had like, if you had a, um, I don't know, like a, one of these big, uh, like a Winnebago or something in your driveway where you could live in the Winnebago for two months. Yeah. You know, that's a, like. A lot so of people did that during Sandy or after Sandy, you know. Well, like, I'll look at something like that and be like, yeah, let's do that. But my wife would be like, oh, we're never going to do that. I'm like, okay, well, I'm never going to do the kitchen. Then. <laughs> yeah, you know right. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, better start playing a lottery. Well, it, yeah. I mean, and and also, it's. I think one of the most important things to think of as, as a young couple is stop acquiring stuff that needs to be stored. Yeah. It's just stuff mm -hmm. and it prevents you from getting projects done. Yeah. Take advantage of Facebook marketplace, get rid of junk. I think um, we've got some, some things I'd like to get rid of. I, I know that uh, you sold some things that uh, I did some electrical work recently and that was all done with Facebook marketplace. Mm -hmm. So That's like my basement with the water. Like there's just so much crap down there. So even if I was going to bring someone in to do something about that, it would be two weeks of just getting all the shit out of the basement. Does Hunter have a ton of toys that he doesn't use? Oh, yeah. And it's a revolving door of new toys constantly. How, how the, the worst thing is when other, other parents give you toys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like oh, hey, hey, Johnny's a little too big for these now. Here's, I don't like, you know, everybody did that for us. And my sister has a son who's two. And I don't do it because I'm, I know what it's, you know, like the clothes, everything. I'm like, we got clothes from people that my son never wore. Yeah. Hand me down stuff. He Bring just never. Right goodwill. Yeah. That's what we do. It's so close. You know, you just drop it in the back. We had, um, when the, when the boys were little, I had a neighbor stop by and he had like all this stuff in the back of his car and I'm looking at him and he's like, like oh yeah, your wife wanted me to drop this off. I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nice, but I was adamant. I was like, no, no, thanks. We don't need it. And my, I, I caught some heat for that. But meanwhile, we didn't have all this stuff. Yeah. Because it's just like the plastic toys. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Everything is like a million little bits. You know, all the toys are, they start out as something whole. And then it's just a a bucket of just tiny little plastic pieces. So what are you working on next? In the shop, yeah, because we're getting away, way far away from woodworking. Well, I got, I got to wrap up this third floor closet job. Um, oh, speaking of which, there's the uh, the client. Probably like, where the hell is my is my stuff that I paid for months ago? Uh, so I got to wrap that up. That's just him finishing and then install, and then uh, I have to build this this big wall unit. Cool. And then working on that big kitchen, I got. 
uh, for this same closet client. I'm working on her kitchen design right now. Uh, another kitchen. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. I'm waiting on answers back. They're like, can you give us a formal price? I'm like, I'm going to need some answers to these questions, please. <laughs> like, I need to have all the details sorted out before I can give you a final price. Um, so I'm working on that. The salt boxes, laser is still down. Uh, I'll be on the third tube that they're going to ship out FedEx two day, they said, and a new power supply. So hopefully that gets back up and running. But I also just about five minutes before we started recording this podcast, bought a new laser. <laughs> When's that getting here? So that should be like a five day ship time. Hopefully it ships out tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's Coming exciting. Las Vegas. Yeah. It's a, a full spec, full spectrum laser PS 48, 150 watt. So how, what does the PS48 stand for? Uh, Pro Series 48. So it's 48 by, I want to say, 36. I think so. That's a serious looking machine. Yeah. So this is without the options, you know, so... They always show you the base price and then you upgrade all this stuff. Wow. That just jumped the number up pretty big. Yeah. And then, you know, freight, I got the, uh, uh, what's it called? Like premium support in case I got anything, you know, for 250 bucks, that's money well spent. So it's 48 by, uh, 36. Nice. Yeah. So I could fit um, 48 into four, or sorry, four into 48 would be uh, 12. So I could fit 12, 11, 12 pieces in there at once. Well, that'll make the job go quicker. Yeah. Actually, more, uh, yeah, more than that, because I get another one like at the top. So yeah. Any other 12 or 13? Laser projects other than the salt boxes? No. And that's what kills me to spend, you know, 17 grand on a new laser is that our laser income for the year is like less than 50,000. So, yeah, but we got to get this job done. Sure. Sure. Well, maybe, um, you know, patterns or something that, like yeah, that I mean, we road. do use it throughout the year, um, for making templates and stuff like that. And, you know, we hope to do some stuff with today's craftsman with the push sticks yeah. and, um, maybe templates for, some of the plans, you know, sure. like I could see for that bench, like just making a full size template for those legs with the taper yep. and the curve. You could easily do, make the project a lot easier. Yeah. A lot of people downloaded those plans. Yeah. We sold one after the free period, oh, nice. but um, yeah, I want to say it was like almost 300. Cool. Yeah. That's a fun project. Yeah. I thought so. I'm hoping somebody will buy the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a count. Yeah, hoping somebody will buy the actual thing itself. Got some serious heartburn right now. I'm wondering if that's what's hurt my back, if it's actually heartburn. Did you eat something today or no? Mm, yeah, I did eat. But nothing You're not weird. doing any exercise these days. You're totally off. Um, yeah, I'm so in the weeds. It's like I can't even. You're working so much. Yeah. Let's see. That's cool. So we had how many downloads? I think. I mean, it's. I think it's going to be really hard for you to find time to do any exercise. But I think if you could find even 15 minutes a day, it would change you. Yeah. It, like it's one of those things where you just have to make time. 15 minutes uh, is definitely doable. Yeah. And makes it, it goes slow when you're lifting weights. 15 minutes can go pretty damn slow. Oh, yeah. Hiking, you know. But you're right on the bike path. You can get right on that bike path and walk for 10 minutes one way and turn around the other way. Yeah, that's true. That's not giving me a... 
Not giving you account. Uh, I know there's a way to, it might be reports. Summary, online sales. This is in the last 30 days. Yeah, it must be 234. That's pretty good. 237. Some people uh, got two. I thought that was funny. Maybe they did it on accident. Yeah, I was like, what are you going to do with two sets of these plans? <laughs> yeah, it's a fun project. I had one good suggestion from somebody saying, because uh, I was talking about finishing it with lacquer um, because you can't really spray shellac over white paint. And he said, well, what about using bin primer for your white primer? Shellac-based primer. Yeah, yeah. and I thought that was a good idea because yeah. I kind of like to look at that. It's a little warm, that, you know, that bin primer. Yeah. It's not quite so stark white. Like, What do you clean that up with? Denatured alcohol? Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Yeah, because I use that... Um, I either use that or uh, what's the other one? One, two, three. One, two, three is the oil based. Yeah. What, that's stain blocker. Yeah. I oil forget. based stain blocker. That I stuff use something works great. Like when I do my replacement windows, I, you know, pull out the old replacement window and I'll, I prime like the sill and everything because nobody ever did that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess you don't really need it, but it can't hurt while it's open to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, but yeah, then I had a hell of a time cleaning the brush, whatever the, whatever I was using. Uh, what it, it wasn't, it must not have been Zinzer or must not have been Ben because um, denatured alcohol did not clean the brush. No, it must've been uh, oil-based then. Yeah. It wasn't water-based for yeah. sure. It must have stunk. Been. Yeah. The, the, the Zinzer stain block or oil-based has a really strong smell. It's great because it sticks to just about everything. Mm-hmm. It's not so easy to use. Um, it's pretty thin. Yeah, I don't really. Um, I think, I think when I use it, I I probably use a throwaway brush. Yeah. Yeah, I had like a. I like those brushes with a real short handle for okay. just doing stuff like that, you know. And it was like a cheapy one. I forget what they call those. Wooster makes a nice one. Yeah, I like Wooster brushes. I've been using uh, Corona brushes recently. I like those. Yeah, Lou likes those. Yeah, Coronas are nice. Yeah, and they're like the price is good. Yeah, they're my favorite brush now. I have a, uh, like my good brushes are Purdy's. I think as long as you I get a- Purdy, I don't know. I think they might have dumbed it down a little bit when they went into all the home stores. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't know if you're getting a good brush or you're getting a home store brush. Yeah, and they probably have different skews. Like if you go to- Painters Express and you buy a Purdy, I don't know if that, but whatever. It's probably different than the one that you get at Lowe's or whatever. I was always a Purdy guy until, until really maybe a year or two ago. I think I saw um, Finnish Carpenter TV, Richard, who I really like. I think he's a really talented guy. Um, he was talking about Corona brushes. And then I saw that they had them at Jasmine Hardware. Mm -hmm. And Jack over at Jasmine was saying, no, he liked it. And uh, I started using them, and now that's what I use. And I'll usually get a two-inch brush with a, with a cut on it. Yeah. You know, with a little bit of a that diagonal cut, not just a straight yeah. brush. Yeah, they call it a sash, sash. I think so. Yeah. I just like that. Apparently, the straight brushes hold, like, way more paint. I didn't know that. Yeah. Because huh. I always buy those, too. And then, like, when I'm cutting in, I have, like, a really hard time because my cut just, like, runs out super huh. fast. And I saw a guy cutting in with straight brushes and he was like, yeah, he's like these, they just hold, I mean, it makes sense because there's more bristle. Use a nylon brush or a I natural? Have, I have a natural and I have nylon. I like nylon better. Yeah. Even with oil paint, I like nylon better. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't like the natural brush, bristle brush. You know, it just doesn't seem to give me a nice tight line. Yeah. We've used the natural for like, uh, back brushing like the gleam from total boat stuff like that yeah that makes sense because there you want to use um you definitely want to use a natural brush for, yeah because they're like really varnish. fine actually i think with that gleam what if i have a flat surface i'll use a roller and a foam brush like tip it with a foam brush yeah, yeah. if if it's just a tabletop but if you got to get into like tight areas yeah well, we did those dutch doors and it was all cracks and crevices everywhere i think uh doesn't 
doesn't uh, Tim spray all that over at True Trade? I think so. Yeah, yeah, you can spray it. It's that's got a real strong smell to it too. Yeah, and it's not a fast dry time. So no, no, yeah, and it's you know that's like a true spar varnish. I, I think. Yeah, I don't think we ever we we shot something with that, but I don't think it ever turned it, into a video. I don't think it did. That was yeah. a while ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah. I remember those doors. Yeah, they were cool. Well, what do you think? Should we shoot the yeah, uh, end finish of this video? Last shot. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta take a pee. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks everybody for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. We truly appreciate you listening. Oh wait. Real quick, we got to thank our sponsor, Ridge Carbide. When you need the right saw blade for the job, put your trust in Ridge Carbide tools. For over, over 50 years, Ridge Carbide has been producing industrial saw blades designed with exact specifications for the cutting results you expect. Before you buy, call Ridge Carbide and they'll help you determine the right tool that meets your needs and your budget. After the sale, Ridge Carbide provides sharpening services for all your saw blades, dado sets, router bits, and jointer planer knives. Located in Kansas, Ridge Carbide Tools provides high-quality products with outstanding customer service at a fair price. What are you cutting? See you next week. If you want to support the show, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Share the show with your friends or consider subscribing to our Patreon. We'll see you next week. Yeah.